Welcome back, crime scene enthusiasts. Usually I say criminal justice enthusiasts, but crime scene works, I guess. Hopefully we'll have a crime scene in this case, because we've had a lot of lawsuits lately. We've got, I believe, six more cases left here to finish up the game. So we'll have this video and one more after this. So let's see what cases we have this time, because the last three cases were sort of famous ones that I knew about. Cheating on a quiz show. Charlie Ingler Quiz Committee. Charlie Ingler, a retired soldier, participated in the quiz show. During the competition, Delilah Ingler and her friend Trovania Tarkin were with audience and they were watching the competition live. The contestant used all his jokers in the first seven questions of the 15 question contest and completed the competition with a prize of a million dollars by answering the remaining questions correctly. Suspicions of cheating during the competition have increased. After reading the questions and answers option allowed by Charlie Ingler, he changed the wrong options he chose with a sudden decision according to coughing sounds coming from the audience to the right option. He also confirmed the decision with a coughing voice on the questions he was undecided on. Based on the reports of, of the competition's engineers and computational biologists, a law suit was filed against Charles Ingler, Delilah Ingler, and Trevelyan Tarkin. Coughing sound was recorded 192 times during the competition. I didn't hear any coughing sound at all. I was sitting in the middle of the studio where the competition was taking place. So this has to be who wants to be a millionaire. And I was sure there was no sound coming there. I didn't cheat. I won the contest completely by virtue of it. My husband won the contest and he deserved it. The reason why I coughed during the competition was due to an infection in my throat. The only reason I was there was to support my friend. I didn't have any activities other than watching the competition. I don't even know why I'm testifying. There are two pieces of digital evidence in this case. Yes, a good history question came up. I think it's option B. All right, so he changed it to option D. <laughs> All right. Does sound a little bit suspicious. You think it's normal for your wife and friend to cough so much in every cough just before you respond? I was so focused on the questions that it was impossible for me to hear a cough. So why do you feel the need to change your answer at the last second every time you answered the questions you were sure you had the answer to? As I said, the questions were easy, but I was careless. Every time the correct answer came to me at the last second, that's how late I wasn't. And that's how late I was in changing my answers. When you notice that your husband is stuck with the wrong answers, you allegedly warn him by coughing. What is your defense? I have a chronic cough problem, and as a result, I cough excessively. This has nothing to do with me helping my husband. Except for the fact that you said before you had an infection, so now you've changed your story. If you have a chronic coughing disease, why haven't you coughed once during the time here? That was the other thing I was going to wonder. I've noticed that too. It could be because I'm stressed. I think stress is good for my cough disease. Guess you have a chronic cough problem too, or am I wrong? Like any human being, I can cough. I'm more that I coughed a lot during the competition. This is because the seat I sat in was very dusty. I could literally feel the dust in my throat. Are you stressed right now? Yes, I'm a little stressed. Maybe stress is good for me. Yeah, I would say this is fairly suspicious. The fact of the cost being where they were, they had the sound recordings for it, and she changed her story. She was saying she had a sinus issue, and then suddenly now she's got a condition. Yeah. Refunding the money. All right. We got a murder here. No criminal record on this guy. This guy's got a criminal record. Possession and carrying drugs. 
Recently, the body of Abby Lev was found on the beach. The presence of a suicide note in Abby's bag beside the body, along with her recent use of medication for depression, raises the suspicion that she may have committed suicide. Martin Gambert and Galvin Hill, who were recently text messages and were suspects, were summoned for questioning. I'm guessing they were texting her is what it meant? After the examination of the autopsy of the corpse, it has been decided that the case should be opened. Galvin Hill, I admit that using Alexi to get close to Abby was despicable. Who's Alexi? But I loved Abby so much I would do anything for her. I don't know what you see in our messages, but I'm not the one to hurt her. She always adorned me, but I always cared about her. I went to her house on the night of the incident, but I couldn't find her. Just as I was about to return home, I saw her get out of a taxi. She was distraught and tearful. I went over to her and told her to get into my car. At first she didn't want to, but I couldn't leave her there, so I insisted a bit and got her in. After that, I suggested going to the beach to get some fresh air, and she agreed. When we got to the beach, we talked, and she felt better, and I took her home. I went home, and I went to sleep. Martin Gambert? I'm not a drug addict. Abby and I had been friends since college, and we started using together during that time, but neither of us starves for drugs in your absence. Sometimes we did it for fun or to get high. It wasn't something we hid and we were together that night. We were, when we were going to have dinner together, we went to a restaurant called Silent Rock and had dinner. After dinner, we drank alcohol and got up. Afterwards, we bought drugs to have some fun by the beach. I asked several times to verify that she was not taking antidepressants before taking the drug. She swore she didn't. After a while, we were chatting, laughing, and having fun in a place where there was no one on the beach. Then there was a reproachment between us under the influence of alcohol and drugs. After getting close for a while, she started yelling and hitting me when I made to move and moved to take her a step forward. I grabbed her by the hand and pushed her away to stop her. I told her to go home and calm down as she kept walking up to me and yelling. Then she took a taxi and left, and after that I went home and slept. I know my sister has been talking, taking therapies and antidepressants lately. But she was never one to kill herself. Even when my parents died, she didn't resent life. She never stopped caring about the art department she studied and me. She was always there for me. She also called my me my dear sister in the letter she wrote. But since our mother died, she called me my beautiful daughter. She would never call me my sister or Alexi. So I don't think she wrote this letter. When I saw the message on my sister's phone, I realized how a jerk like Galvin had tricked me and used me for my sister. I knew that my sister... I were friends, but I never knew that Galvin had feelings for her. I am so saddened by the death of my sister that I do not have the strength to blame Galvin. <clears throat> Abby's autopsy report it was determined that there was more than 200 per mil of alcohol in the body. It was determined that there was around 700 milligrams ecstasy in the body. Evidence of 70, 50 milligrams of antiracin were found in her body. And understood the death is caused by a cessation of body functions by entering a crisis as a result of it seeing the toxin substance limit. The approximate time of death was determined as 4 a.m. This is between Abby, Liv, and Galvin, one day before the event. Determined not to want to talk? Yeah, I'm sure. The reason I dated your sister is just to be close to you. Please stop seeing me as your friend and give us a chance. I haven't done anything but love you for years. Break up with my sister and get out of our lives. I want to talk to you today. Please let me come and... Let's talk a little. You should leave me alone today. I'm not good at all, and the last thing I want is to talk stupid things to you. What happened? Are you okay? Should I come to you? Won't you answer? Okay, I'm coming to you. Martin. Hey, baby, get ready and we'll leave in an hour. Can't we postpone it? No, it won't. Besides, I said I have something new and I, we will try it together. Okay, all right, I'll be ready in an hour. Forgive me, my loved ones. Lately, I've been feeling like I'm just living a living dead. It was not difficult for me to make this decision, but I know it will be difficult for you. Remember me well. Not bad. I love you guys so much, Lexi. I apologize to you most of all, and I'm very sorry that I will not be able to continue to be by your side. I love you very much, my dear sister. said that when you smoked the drug, you two got closer. 
Was this the first time this had happened? No, sometimes we are closer than friends. We were so attached to our friendship that we would forget about it in the morning. And that night I thought she would want to move on, but when she reacted I immediately quit. Afterwards I thought she wasn't okay and told her to go home. Do you think she was telling the truth about not taking her medication? When she took her medication, she would be very lethargic and exhausted. That night was so much fun and full of joy. After she promised me that she would take her medication, I agreed. Would not take her medication, I agreed to use drugs. Why did you offer to take her to the beach when you were near Abby's house? When I saw her, she looked very sad and crying. It made sense to go to the beach and relax a bit. I was afraid that if I left her at her house, she would do something to herself when she was alone. What did you talk about after you went to the beach? I asked her why she didn't want me. Then she said she didn't want to talk about it. That it would never happen. After her short pause, she started crying. After that, I decided not to bring up the subject again. What happened next? After seeing her so exhausted and sad, I remember the antidepressant drugs her brother had told me. I took it out of her bag and tried to give her an antidepressant medication, but she didn't want to. I threw the pill into the water and took her to drink some water and relax. Then she calmed down and I took her house around 4 a.m. Then I went to my own home and slept. Alright, he was the last person to see her. He knew not to give her the antidepressants. I think he did it. Because somebody wrote that uh, suicide note. I don't think it was him, because I don't think he killed her. He, though, did. Pretty sure that's... Yeah. He killed her. And the fact that he's been trying to cover it up... I'm going to give him 50 years. I don't think he may be intended to murder her, but the cover-up of the crime means the punishment is going to be severe, too. All right, we've got a happy couple here. <laughs> Violation of privacy arising from unauthorized photography and sharing in the gym. Oh, well, we don't really have... A... So the woman took the pictures? Oh, well, this is going to be interesting here. While working out at Ham's gym, where he frequently goes, David Lewis noticed a woman filming and saw that he appeared in the video and warned her about it. Kendall Kelly, who said that according to the gym's regulation, there is no prohibition on taking photos and videos in the gym, continued to shoot. In the following days, upon the repetition of this incident, David Lewis, who wanted to seek his rights through legal means, filed a lawsuit. My purpose and motivation in doing sports is to feel good and to have a healthy, aesthetic body. I've been coming to this gym for years and before. Even events like this wouldn't have happened. Recently, it annoys me that a lot of women don't care about us appearing in the frame while they are constantly taking videos and photos. I don't care if they're here for sports or if they or to take nice pictures for themselves. I just need to make sure I'm not in the frame or come and ask permission. Again, when such an incident happened, I went and warned her nicely, but she insulted me. When it happened again the next day, I complained to the gym management and wrote an email. As a last resort, I decided to file a lawsuit. I have a right to take pictures of myself in the gym as I want. I don't take photos or videos where he is in the foreground. He came to me and told me I should delete them because he was visible in the background. I told him that none of my followers would look at his ugly face when I had a beautiful buttocks and physique. A few days later, when this incident was repeated, we had an argument and he said he would report me. I didn't think it was serious, but I'm not afraid of being sued. I didn't do anything wrong. So, oh, there was more than one picture. All right. Pay a lot of money to come to this gym and work out, but clearly some people's purpose isn't to exercise. They use the gym like a catwalk to showcase themselves on camera. This isn't an issue for me, but when they invade my space and record my face, I feel I need to assert my rights. Therefore, I kindly ask the gym management to find a solution to this. Mr. David, we are deeply sorry for your situation, but there is no article signed by all of the members about this situation and gym regulations. Please try to resolve the problem by contacting the person in question bilaterally. 
We wish you a healthy day. Mr. Lewis, what would you like to say? When she posts photos and videos of herself at the gym, millions of people can see me without my permission. Does seem like this update definitely has some issues where it repeats some of the same things, so I hope they do fix that in the future. Of course, her goal is not to shoot me directly, but she doesn't do it in quieter sections or locker areas where there are no people like me behind her. <laughs> Miss Kelly, how are you going to defend yourself? <laughs> What I do is show my own fitness to my followers often. I have a lot of followers who started working out when me and who, with me and who are determined with me. I share photos and videos from the gym with them every day to keep them consistent. I had a feeling it was going to repeat itself. <laughs> Then it does change somewhat too, so that their stability can continue. No one cares about his face except the person who sued me. What they're following is me and my great physique. Therefore, I do not think that I have violated any of his rights. <laughs> is it true that you insulted him? It wasn't an insult. I just said what I saw. He thinks his face is better than my great physique. It's so lame that he thinks my followers would look at his face when I have a butt. Sadly, there are a lot of women like this out there. I mean, I really don't get it, but there are a lot of women that think that just, you know, I get that they want to be popular or something. To me, the whole thing about it is, how do you not feel that you're being used in some way? Because you're basically acknowledging that some guy's going to go to your social media to look at your butt. When I was growing up, the guy that did that would have been called a creep. But now, evidently, some ladies want that, which is very odd. I hope you will understand this mistake here and you will find me right. If you wish, I can share photos with you after the lawsuit. My followers will be curious about you. Let me see what my options are. Kendall Kenny was ordered to remove relevant content from social media and pay $1,000 in damages for defaming David Lewis. It's been decided Kendall Kennedy will remove his photos from social media and that restrictions related to this matter will be imposed as a chip. Or to pay $1,000 in damages for insulting David Lewis. Kendall Kenny was presumed innocent. All right. Now, I'm not a huge gym goer myself, but I do know that there are certain rules at the gym. And generally, one of the common decorums is you do not take pictures of other people at the gym. Now, both of them recognized that was not her intent, but once he warned her about it, she should have been more considerate about it. So my thought is that I would go with this one. Now, the thing is, in this Banana Republic here, they do have defamation as a thing. So the real question is between these two. I think that this is where I'm going to land. Even though she did say he had an ugly face, you know, that's not worth $1,000. But does need to remove the pictures. All right, I believe that was our three cases for this episode. So I believe we have three cases left in this update. And we will look at those cases in the next episode. If you enjoyed what I did here, though, please go ahead and click that like button. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, so that you're aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see you back for the final episode of Judge Sim, I Am The Law.